Pam in Chicago, you are on the air with Representative Pocan. Uh, good morning uh, to you both. Uh, so getting right to the point, uh, I'm in Chicago. Of course, you know Highland Park is uh, where that uh, is in relation to Chicago. So uh, my concern is gun legislation, mm -hmm. Congressman. We've been told, you know, you have to start somewhere, and what we have didn't go far enough. So now that we've got something, how soon are we going to get something else? Because in my eye, it shouldn't take another year or two to put forth additional legislation. So I'm asking how soon can we really get what is needed? And then also keep in mind, Tom, that there was another uh, shooting of 90 bullets, 60 of them riddled a black man's body. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Pam. Yeah, no, I hear you, Pam. So let me answer it in two ways. One, um, you know, the Senate is the obstacle to everything that we've been passing um, through the House. We've sent multiple measures and, you know, the Senate because of their 50-50 majority, but also because they've allowed themselves to follow their rather arcane uh, rules, I would argue, around filibuster. Uh, it's been really difficult. So the fact that this came from the Senate, I think that was their saying, this is what we can do right now. Not that that's acceptable, Pam, uh, because I think, you know, how many times do we have to see an AR-15 or a similar weapon used? And then we ignore that that is anything to do with what's happened. But I think the real test, Pam, will be, you know, now that we've passed this, and this is why it's important to have something even small passed. If people see the sky doesn't fall and uh, they don't get, a, you know, hundreds of calls and people mad at them, in fact, hopefully just the opposite, people who are happy with them. Uh, it's more likely people will act and do more because we need to do more. So that's the real test of this first, you know, bipartisan bill, even though most Republicans, the vast majority didn't vote for it in the House. Um, you know, this gave us that opportunity to show that the sky won't fall and that we can get more done because we need to get more done. Mike in Baltimore, Maryland, you are on the air with Representative Pocan. Hi, Tom. Hi, uh, Representative. I have a, I have a two-part question. Um, the first one is concerning the Supreme Court. Since it doesn't look like we're going to rebalance the court, is there any discussions on either term limits or allowing the American people to vote on the folks that's going to be judging us? The oh. second part of my question is, is there any discussion or the rebringing up of a discussion of police reform in the wake of Ohio, where another, yet another young black man, unarmed, has been shot 60 times by police officers? for running away? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, whenever I get multiple questions, it's always a little trickier. Let me answer the second one, and I might need a refresher on the first one, because the second part of the first question I didn't exactly catch. Um, I, I'm not sure if this is going to reinvigorate uh, the conversation. However, I can tell you, you know, I had introduced a bill that I really wish we would have looked at um, that just had standards for police education, for training of police officers, so that no matter where you are in the country, and trust me, it varies greatly on the amount of training and experience a police officer has, at least there's a basic level that we all know as individuals who might get pulled over, uh, as the police themselves, that we know there's a common standard of a base level of education which right now doesn't happen. And I would point to even the Texas shootings, the fact that the officers waited for so long and it took the border patrol to come in because some of them had children in the school to ultimately do something. You know, it just tells me that this is not a good way forward, uh, having no real national standards or for that matter, statewide standards in many places. Uh, I, I just think that's a big part of what we're looking at. Tom, did you catch the first question, both parts? Yeah, Supreme Court reform. Are we yep. going to expand the court? Are we going to impose a judicial code of ethics, that sort of thing? Uh, gotcha. Okay, I missed that second part. So I don't get. I, I don't know if this Senate will do anything. I am a sponsor of a bill to expand the court. I think the person said they think that's not likely to happen. I think they're right with the current Senate. I'm not sure if term limits address the issue. I think you know they could be helpful in the long term. But I don't know if they would address the immediate issues we have at all. So um, that can be a part of the debate. But I think, you know, I'm looking at the immediate problems we have. I do think something around the judicial code of ethics. I mean, watching what's happened with Clarence Thomas and, and his uh, wife, I mean, clearly uh, seems to did not pass the smell test, I think, for most people who might be watching this, even though most people don't follow the Supreme Court super closely. They should, uh, based on the actions we saw in the last month from them. Um, but again, you know, unless the Senate decides 
that we no longer wear wigs when we go to work when most of their rules were created, we've got a real problem um, because they're not going to be able to pass the things that we have sent from the House to address many issues. And, you know, Tom, if you're sensing frustration, it's because I have frustration, right? I want to see the Senate do more. And, um, you know, I think people want us to do more. The president can do a few things by executive order, but it's not as powerful. It's not as permanent. We need a functioning House and Senate. The House has been functioning. And I understand a 50-50 Senate, but part of it is they've got to be a bit more creative in how to get around some arcane rules. Amen. George, in Chicago, you're on the air with Representative Pocan. Thank you, Tom. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning. Uh, since the massacre in Highland Park has taught us that the cherished right-wing myth of the only thing that can stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun is false and bankrupt. Um, in fact, he got off over 70 shots despite the fact that there were cops up and down the parade route. They got off none, and they couldn't even stop his escape. We need something more than just good guys with guns. And as a lifelong Democrat, I'm getting real tired of my own party not being tough enough and aggressive enough when it comes to seeking legitimate gun regulations. You know, the Republicans spent years introducing a bill every week to repeal Obamacare and, and years on Benghazi. I want to see aggressive Democrats in the House, and, and I'm not criticizing you because your heart's in the right place and you do the right thing. But I want to see bills introduced every week that will mandate a thorough and complete background check for anybody who wants a license and for each individual weapon and a 10-day waiting period. And you keep introducing those bills until they finally pass. Enough is enough. Yeah, George, I, I hear you. First of all, let me just say this on behalf of the 99 or 98 percent of Democrats who want to do everything you just said. And we have a majority of Democrats in the House who want to pass a ban on assault weapons, right? Um, but the Senate, nothing is going to get through. And, it, and you know, I don't want to have to answer that on every question today, Tom, but I may have to because that is the reoccurring problem that we experience when we send things out of the House. Um, so, you know, yes, there are a few Democrats who are holding things up. And in some cases, it's the rules the Senate follows that holds things up. But the vast majority of people are there. Yeah. And, and, uh, and a good thing it is, although, wow, the Senate is such a mess.